Okay, so we are going to take a look at the law of superposition. So we've already started talking in geology about plate tectonics. We've talked about plate movement. We've already identified the different kinds of rocks, igneous, sedimentary, metamorphic. So learning about the law of superposition, this mostly has to do with sedimentary rocks. Okay, so the law of superposition might seem like a big word. You may wonder why this man is doing that little dance with his hands, but it has to do with um, sedimentary layers. Okay, so the law of superposition is when sedimentary layers are deposited in a time sequence with the oldest rocks being on the bottom and the youngest rocks being at the top. Okay, so the word super, of course, means above, better than, on top of, okay, on top of. And then the word position has to do with where the rock is located. So the word superposition means located on top of, quite literally. All right, so it's easy to break down. So we have the oldest rocks are going to be on the bottom. Okay, they have to be deposited first, put down the bottom first, all the sediment first, put at the bottom. And then the youngest rocks are going to be added to the top of that. Okay, so we're going to take a look at a little schematic that will help us understand a little bit better. So we've got the different growing piles of sedimentary layers. We've got five there in that picture. Beige, blue, green, yellow, pink, and then we have time. So this little chart down at the bottom. Okay, you can see that we've got beige first at time one. And then we've got for time two is blue, time three is green, time four is yellow, time five is pink. So at time one, this beige rock is put down first, whatever it's made of, whatever minerals it's made of. Okay, time two, then we have this blue rock that is put down. Now it's not going to be added to the bottom. It's going to be added right on top because we know that sedimentary rock is formed whenever particles from erosion and weathering stick together. They lithify and come together. So it's not going to be added to the bottom. It's a little arrow there with an X through it. Nope. It's going to be added to the top. Okay. So that's a little arrow just showing where it's going to be. The new sediment's going to be added. For time three, the same thing's going to happen. We're going to get our new sedimentation on top. Same with time four. And then the same with time five. So it's Makes sense if you think about it. You have to have your foundation layers. You have to have your first layers first. So just take a look at this picture for just a second. Where do you think the oldest rocks are from the schematic we just looked at? And where are the youngest rocks? Okay. So just like we talked about in the last diagram, the oldest rocks are going to be here at the bottom. So I'll draw a little arrow. So the oldest rocks here, because they were laid down first. Okay, and then the youngest rocks are going to be on the top of the mountain because sedimentation had to deposit the rocks on top of there first. Now, sedimentation probably didn't blow to the top of the mountain. At one point, all of this was underwater, and then all these different layers of sediment were put down. That's why we see the striation, the bands in the rock. Okay, and then over time it was worn away. All right, so we can see that it's definitely sedimentary rock, probably sandstone of some sort. Now here's a picture, sort of a famous picture that we use when we talk about um, the law of superposition. So we've got layers G through A, and we're going to draw a little line here to show that the older or the deeper you go, the farther down you go, the older the rocks get. All right. So we've got G here at the bottom. It's going to be our oldest rock. We've got F. Then we've got E. So F was laid on top of G. E was laid on top of F. D was laid on top of E. And then C was laid on top of D. But if you'll notice, D and C are sort of cut off. They don't sort of complete... Um, completely create a layer. Okay, so something has happened. So you see the D is cut off at those two points, and then C is cut off here. Okay, so what happened? And when were they laid down? So 
we may think, well, maybe D and C were laid after, or they were, of course, laid after E and F, but how did they get to be this sort of weird shape? You know, where their hole dug into the ground and they were deposited on top? We can actually use the idea that these are all curved shapes. So F is curved, E is curved, has a sort of undulating curved line to it. G is curved, D is curved, and so is C. So we can tell that layers C, excuse me, G <clears throat> through C were laid all together. Okay, they were laid first before this sort of um, um, bending or whatever sort of geological event took place. So there was some sort of plate movement, some sort of mountain forming, okay? And then after that happened, layers A and B were then put on top. So we can tell because of their flat, straight surface. There's no curves, there's no curving, there's no undulation. So then B and A were laid after this geological event. So we're gonna talk about mountain building. We're gonna talk about um, what happens when plates come together. We're gonna talk about syncline and anticline. But we can use the law of superposition to determine what, which kind of um, sediment was laid before and after some sort of geological event. Okay, so this is our introduction to the law of superposition. Um, and now we're going to do some practice to make sure that we get that geological um, idea into our brains.